Good evening, how are you? Welcome to the class for intermediate. How are you? How are you, Olga? Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> and you? Fine, thank you for asking. Is it raining there where you are? Yes. Very hard. Yes. Really yes. heavy, right? Yes. Here is like a, an electrical storm. Yes. Yes, it is like that, right? Probably we will be able to finish the class without any problem, right? I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> well, very good. We have Jenny. Good evening, Jenny, Marisol, Rafael, um, Soraya, Ana Lopez. That's it, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And, but I guess that there is more people missing, right? In the classes. Oh. There are more people missing because I in the group I have around 20 people, but normally you are six or or ten. Uh, I really don't know, but uh this group is very small. Yes, it's a really small group. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. what I noticed because in previous groups they, they are like 15, 16, mm -hmm. and this mm -hmm. one is only six. But no problem. Um we are about to, to start the class. I'm just going to check here that you are present, Olga, Marisol, Rafael, Soraya, and Anna. Wow. Okay. So welcome to the class. We are about to begin. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your effort. Gracias por conectarse. Gracias por estar aquí. If you don't understand something, ask me, right? Si no entienden algo, pregúnteme en español o en inglés. Si, en, si yo lo voy a repetir, si no entienden algo, Levanten la mano o este, dígame, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. uh, did you work in the platform? Did you work on the platform? Yes, yes. yes teacher. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> Sorry. I, I have a very difficult day. Very, very difficult busy. day. Yeah. Very That's... busy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably. I imagine, right? But yeah. this, uh, this is the platform, right? Did you finish this <laughs> exercise? It seems that this is this one, right? This is for the passive. That is what we were studying. Did you work on this one? Did you finish this? Do you have any questions about this? Any problem? No, no questions? About the knowledge check? Like to choose this option, the keys was composed by... The song yesterday was painted or composed by, or written by, or directed or recorded. So we have different options. Did you finish this exercise? Yes, right? It's completed. Uh -huh. Teacher, I have a question. Yes. Ah. Ayer usted nos dejó una tarea mm -hmm. de investigar un poquito acerca de un lugar que quisiéramos visitar. Yes. ¿verdad? Yo hice la investigación, pero yo no encontré voz pasiva en, en la investigación que estaba mm -hmm. haciendo. Exacto. Todavía no, no entiendo yo cuándo es que debo de usarla, porque um, normalmente no hablamos así el español, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. Entonces, ahí estoy un poquito indecisa, porque en las lecturas que estuve haciendo... No encontré voz pasiva. ¿Y lo que investigó fue en, en inglés? ¿Lo encontró en español o...? No, en inglés, directamente en inglés. Estuve eh, investigando del teatro de Australia, en Sydney. En Sydney, ok. Ajá. Y este, cambió oraciones, por ejemplo, si estaba alguna oración en forma activa, ¿la cambió en voz pasiva? No, eso no lo hice. Porque no. yo creí que eh, usualmente en las lecturas me tenía que aparecer la voz pasiva. Yes, usually. So, a veces le va a aparecer. Uh -huh. Y a veces, pues, no le va a aparecer. Depende cómo esté escrito, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Pero era de investigar y si tal vez no le aparecía una, tal vez cambiar una o dos oraciones para usar la voz pasiva. Pero usted sabe cómo usar la voz pasiva. Sí. Uh -huh. Sí. Pero este, en las lecturas que yo tuve, uh -huh. no, no apareció. Entonces yo dije, 
¿Será común esto o es, o, o es eh, alguna manera de expresión típica de, 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 del idioma? Y, y, pues sí. <ríe> sí, este, a veces se aparecen en varios escritos. Tal vez no todo el escrito es que va a estar en voz pasiva. No es que todo uh -huh. va a ser una oración o alguna oración. Sí va a tener en voz pasiva, pero van a haber varios que sean en voz activa, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Pero es para, la voz pasiva es para sonar más formal en ciertas, uh -huh. como libros o lecturas científicas, cosas así, ¿verdad? De investigación. Uh -huh. Es algo más formal, pero no ah. es que todas las lecturas estará en voz pasiva. Uh -huh. Ahí vamos okay. a ver un párrafo donde todo está en voz pasiva, pero ya, ya van a ver lo que vamos a hacer con eso, pero ya después, okay. ¿verdad? Ok, gracias. Ok. So, no questions about, about this knowledge check. Have you worked in something else? Did you work on uh, the, next, the next part? For example, this one. Well, this one is just a, a conversation, right? We are going to practice a conversation. And also, we are going to practice the pronunciation. And this is the knowledge check, right? about the passive, right? Present Ay, passive. Peter, justamente en ese yo no he podido, no he podido resolver ninguna. ¿De este? De esta. De este, de el 1.9. Yes, teacher. Okay, it says complete using simple present and pa simple present passive of the verbs in brackets. Remember the structure to be plus the past Parsible, instruction, completa las oraciones. Vaya, este, nada más este cambiar el, la oración a este pas, lo, voz pasiva con el verbo to be y el pasado participio. Many crops are grown in Taiwan, right? Many crops, muchos campos está, son, eh, crecen en Taiwán. Eh, son crecidos, se, se traduce, ¿verdad? Pero suena mejor crece, entonces are grown, ¿verdad? Porque dice es el simple present. Ajá, simple present. Ya vamos a ver todos los tiempos. Every tense in English can be transformed into a passive voice. Todos los tiempos los podemos cambiar a voz pasiva. No es un tiempo la voz pasiva. Es una manera de expresarse, ¿verdad? Es, es, una, es para cambiar, este, para omitir el sujeto. Pero no es, que, es, como, no es como el presente, el pasado. Todos los tiempos se pueden cambiar a voz pasiva. Y aquí le dice que lo haga en simple present, en presente simple, pero cambiando la voz pasiva. Y así Ay, va. Sí, sí ya, ya, ya sé por qué, sé porque yo lo estaba haciendo en pasado. Uh -huh, exacto, hay que leer bien las indicaciones, es simple sí. present. Si le ponemos sí. was o were, nos la va a tomar uh -huh, como malo. Por eso yo así lo hice. Uh -huh, exacto. So, eso, si sí. tienen preguntas durante eh, la semana, me la pueden hacer durante el día, ¿verdad? Pero eso es lo que vamos a estudiar en este momento. As Olga mentioned, uh, we had an activity, right? What was the activity? What was the activity that we had, like the homework that we had? Investigar sobre un lugar y encontrar la voz activa. ¿Qué es lo que... Ahí, ahí es donde yo me equivoqué. Ajá. Encontrar o convertir algunas oraciones que están en, en voz activa a voz pasiva. Exactly. Vamos a convertir, mm -hmm. vamos a tratar de usar la voz pasiva. We will try to use the passive voice. Mm -hmm. okay, we are going to have a little bit of a review here. This is what we studied yesterday, right? Yes. We studied the passive voice. Uh, we study like landmarks also. You have to investigate a landmark. We talked about Iglesia Rosario. We talked about Joya de Seren, Puerto de la Libertad, Puerto del Diablo, right? Lago de Coatepeque. And we use it like we know how we use it, right? When there is no doer, when the fact is more important than the doer of the action. And we know that it is shown in formal readings, right? In las lecturas formales o científicas. And also we have here the, the formulas, right? Passive and active, right? This is the active voice. 
and this is the same sentence in passive voice, right? So it's the same, it's just the order, right? That's the that's the reason why the, the formulas are really important because we can see how we form the sentences like subject, verb, object, and then the passive sentence, object, was, were. This, this changes, right? El verbo to be cambia. No siempre va a ser was, were. Si está en presente es is, are, verdad? Y es en pasado es was, were. Pero siempre vamos a utilizar el past participle. Eh, siempre que lo cambiamos a voz pasiva. Y si queremos um, agregar el sujeto es usando by, ¿verdad? By. So this is the, the structure that we studied yesterday. The differences between active and passive. And these are more examples. So uh, we are going to begin with a volunteer who wants to talk about the, the landmark, who investigated the landmark with using passive. Teacher. Yes. Teacher. Yes. Yo no, uh -huh. o sea, no es, no es, no tengo como muy claro. Uh -huh. Anduve buscando y todo y, y, o sea, de repente sí le hallaba y de repente me chivo la otra vez. Uh -huh. Hice un, una oración así en pasiva, en activa, y e hice un, un pedacito, pero no sé si está bien. Uh -huh. Vale. The dessert was cooked, cooked by grandma. Esa uh -huh. sería pasiva. Uh -huh. Y la activa grandma cook the dessert. Uh -huh. Va, y después hice un pedacito porque no le hallaba, o sea, de eso de Lance Mark que usted nos dijo, estuve leyendo varias cosas, pero a la hora de pasarlo en pasado participio no hallaba, o sea, no que tuviera, que como que fuera congruente, pues, el verbo. Entonces me confundía toda y y, y vaya, lo que hice fue esto. Uh -huh. Sunscape Hotel were visited by my family in 2019. Uh -huh. Its beaches are the best in the Caribbean. Uh -huh. Pero no sé ahí si está bien porque al principio está como lo que es el, el pasado participio, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. Pero ya después la última, no hay como ponerla así, sino que como en, en presente. ¿verdad? ¿Y cuáles Eso. son las que, las que hizo en pasado? Usted lo usted investigó de un lugar y no halló como Olga, le pasó lo de Olga. que no... Ajá, o sea, no hay como al, o sea, como al querer pasar la, el, el verbo, uh -huh. no me parece, o sea, no lo sentía yo que, hubiera, que fuera congruente, pues, o sea, que, el, que ya al pasarlo no, no era lo que quería decir el texto original, pues, y no hallaba, no hay cómo ponerlo. O sea, cómo redactar de manera de poder poner este el pasado participio. Sí, exacto. Okay. No toda la, la lectura va a tener, solo son, como le decía Olga, unas oraciones, ¿verdad? No todas, Ajá. solo son unas, eh, una, una, puede ser si de, de, escribió tres oraciones, una que hubiera sido en voz pasiva, estaba bien. Pero las lecturas, como vimos aquí, eh, por ejemplo, esta del Machu Picchu, no es que toda está escrita en voz pasiva, solo las partes rojas, ¿verdad? Was constructed, ¿verdad? Was declared, pero las demás están en voz activa. Ajá. Pero, eh, ¿de qué lugar fue el que usted investigó? What place did you investigate? Ay, es que aquí me faltó. Zoomscape Hotel in the Re Dominican Republic. Ok. Es un, es, un, es un hotel en República Dominicana. Zoomscape se llama. Okay, and did you look for pictures or something or just, you, you, you just wrote the information down? Este, no, 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 fotos, no, no. No, just the information, right? Ajá, ajá, solo, ajá, solo la, solo la, solo, o sea, solo leí, pues, o sea, y, y traté de, de pasarlo así a lo que usted me, me. You investigated this, this hotel, right? Ajá, ajá, sí, cabal. Okay, Soundscape Dominican Beach in Punta Cana, right? Right, very good. And what did sí. you investigate about this hotel? Uh, the beach uh -huh. is the best in the Republic, Dominican Republic. Uh -huh. uh, 
que much people, o sea, muy, muy visitada, o sea, que eran de las más, esta era de la más visitada, con que mayor, más, más turistas. Pero lo que saqué, o sea, lo que saqué fue, fue así, solo un poquito, porque estaba como, como que no sabía si sí o no, pues. Uh -huh. Entonces, por eso no, no, ay, toda la tarde pasaba en eso. <risa> no, no le hallaba, iba de quererlo redactar, y, pero como en español una cosa, y al pasarlo no me salía, no era congruente, sentía yo. Ah, ok, ok, pero al final sí hizo algo, hizo alguna información que nos, que nos pueda dar. Este, o sea, yo solo eso puse de que vaya, Sunscape Hotel, Were visited, were visited by my family in 19, 19, in 2019. Mm -hmm. Its beaches are the best in the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. O sea, de lo que leí lo más, como resal, que más resaltaba era eso, de que eran las mejores playas del Caribe mm -hmm. y las más visitadas. Ok, very good, very good. Entonces vamos a ver si podemos hacer eso que usted eh, trató de hacer toda la tarde, ¿verdad? Vamos a ver. Sí. Entonces, por ejemplo, aquí este, está la Sunscape Hotel. Como digo Ajá. yo, eh, por ejemplo, en voz activa puedo poner Tourist. O Most of the Tourist. Ajá, Most The tourist, visit that hotel, right? The hotel, the hotel. Right. Entonces, uh -huh. this, is, uh, this is in passive, or this is active, right? Active voice. Sí, sí, uh -huh. tourists visit the hotel. Tourists, let's see here in plural, in plural, right? Now, how can we change this into passive? Uh -huh. So we can say the hotel. The hotel, uh -huh. Is visited, is visited by most of the tourists. Um, tourists. So we just change the the doer of the action, right? The subject disappears. Then okay, the uh -huh. important here is what is the important here? ¿Qué visitan los turistas? El hotel. hotel. Entonces, el hotel, that is the uh -huh. important thing. Eso es lo importante. El hotel, ¿verdad? The hotel. Entonces, el hotel pasa a ser la parte principal, lo primero de la oración. Y ponemos, the hotel is visited by most of the tourists. Si queremos, le ponemos by most of the tourists. O solo le ponemos, the hotel is visited. O is visited um, uh, many times in the year, right? O podemos poner otro complemento ahí. Pero the hotel is visited. Ahí ya está la oración en voz pasiva. Ah, ok. Ok, very good. So thank you for your participation and, and your doubts, Soraya, because it's really interesting. Remember that uh, Dominican, ¿cómo decimos República Dominicana en inglés? Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic. Uh, okay, remember it's Dominican Republic. Republic. Uh, Republic. Republic. The Republic is it's Spanish, right? Spanish. Ah, okay. Spanish, okay. But in English it's Republic. Republic. Republic, exactly. Republic. Sí, yes. Este, uh, respecto a esta, a esta uh, oración donde está el, el, el passive voice, uh, mm -hmm. donde dice the hotel is, is. Entonces, mi confusión es que en la, en la, en el cuadrito anterior, este no ponía uh, la, la, la composición, vea, y decía mm -hmm. object, y decía was or were. Eso ya me, ya me confundió. Exactly, it's confusing. Aquí en la, en la unidad o en la plataforma que ustedes usan, este, se los explican solo con was or were, ¿verdad? En the platform is just explained with was or were, that is the past, en pasado. Pero aquí está en presente. O sea que la voz pasiva está en todos los tiempos. Puede estar en presente y aquí está en presente, es is. 
o puede estar okay. en pasado, cómo se lo explican en la plataforma. Pero ¿por qué me lo explican en la plataforma con was o where? Porque ese sentido de, eh, ahí lo que le quieren decir es que para los textos eh, de que dicen de historia o textos formales, la mayoría es, eh, se habla en pasado porque son cosas que ya pasaron, ¿verdad? Entonces, esa es la única forma que se lo explican ahí, con was, where, pero siempre es la misma estructura. Por ejemplo, si la estructura aquí es was, where, quiere decir que está en pasado, y si está en presente, ¿qué pondríamos aquí en lugar de was y where? Is, or are. Is or are, right? Is or are, exactly. So it's the same, so it's just the tense, el tiempo cambia. So it's the object, is, are, and the past participle and the by an object. That's it. It's the same. So it's just y, the tense. Y, y hablando del verbo to be, eh, podría en cierto momento ser be. Yes, yes, it can be. It sí. depends on the construction. Si depende de la construcción del tiempo, si nada más lleva be, si lleva has, también el, el presente perfecto, no sé si ya lo estudiaron, the present perfect, lleva has, right? I have been... Eh, I have been studying también el presente perfecto continuo todos esos se pueden cambiar a voz pasiva I have been studying uh, the book right the book had been studying by me entonces eh, se pueden cambiar todos esos tiempos okay. pero ya vamos a ver más ejemplos de eso a very good question eso es lo que también les quería explicar que no es solo en pasado sino que también es diferentes tiempos Now we have, uh, do we have another, another volunteer? ¿Quién más investigó de una landmark? ¿Algo que me quieran decir de las landmarks que investigaron? Another volunteer? Yeah, teacher. Okay, Jacqueline, right? Okay. What, yes. what landmark did you investigate? Yo traté de hacer uno de las montañas de colores que están en Perú. Okay, let's see Peru color mountains. And does it have a, a the, name? The, the mountains of color in Peru. These ones. Mm -hmm. Oh, very interesting. And what did you the, what is the information that you got? Is, is the is the local in country Peru? It has a beautiful view and has Amazing different colors. The place was surround the ice before some years ago, and now it's more busy for foreign half of the world. The climb is cool and sometimes rise so much. The, the fauna sea are the llamas, alpacas, and vicuñas. Okay, very good. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. Okay, and it's located in Peru, right? The mountains from Peru are located in Peru, right? They are located in Peru. Okay, they are located in Peru. So as we can see here, this is a, a sentence that is in passive, right? They are located in Peru. That is okay. They are surrounded by ice. Let's say before, right? They were, sorry, surrounded by ice, let's say. Esta es otra passive voice, but they were surrounded by ice. So very good. Thank you for your participation, Jacqueline. And the Peru Colorful Mountains. Do we have another person? Alguien más que haga la, haya hecho la tarea? Another volunteer? Me, teacher. Um... Okay, good evening, Roxana. Okay, uh, what place did you evening. investigate? I, I, um, I, um, I was in, investigate about the, the Yellowstone. This um, is a national park in the USA. Um, this is um, 
um, natural reserve. Um, and this is the first um, place that uh, was signed uh, like a um, natural reserve. And this is the most important um, because um, uh, there are um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, bosques. I <laughs> How do you say bosque in English? Forest. Forest, exactly. Forest. Forest. Yes. Uh, thank you. And there are um, a, a lot of uh, forests and. Uh, animals and um, waters uh, of um, this is uh, so important to the globe because this is um, like um, se me olvidó pulmón del planeta pulmón how do you say pulmón uh, Hígado es liver. El, liver. <laughs> en pulmón es... Um... Lungs, right? Lung. L-U-N-G, yes. lung, yes. Lung, okay. And this is uh, like a planet lung, mm -hmm. in, in this case. And this is... Um, um, uh, natural reserve. Uh, and this is uh, like... A, like um, heritage culture. Mm -hmm. A heritage culture, cultural yes. heritage. Cultural heritage. Okay, very good. So you explain about the Yellowstone Park. Very good. Yes. Where where is it located? Uh, it was located. Um, this is located in the. Um, uh, USA, but I don't I don't remember which state. <laughs> uh, yes, I guess it's in Wyoming, right? Uh, I only remember that it uh, this is like um in a center uh, of uh, various uh, states. Okay, okay, very good, very beautiful place. Thank you for your investigation, Roxana. And uh, we are going to check the vocabulary that you explain here. We have, okay. how, do, how do you say bosque? Forest. Forest, exactly, it's forest, right? So we have forest and we have waterfalls, right? Get some waterfalls? Um, cascadas. 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 Exactly. Yes, waterfalls. waterfalls. We have uh, animals and you mentioned another word here that is national reservation, but is uh, como reserva natural, right? Yes. Reserva natural is natural reserve. Natural oh, reserve. Okay. And eh, como decimos, está localizado en Wyoming, in English. How do you say that in English? It's located. It's located. It's located. It is Wyoming. located in Wyoming, Wyoming. exactly. Okay. And that is passive voice, right? Also, it is located in Wyoming. Now, okay. Very okay. good. Thank you, Roxana. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have Felix. Good evening, Felix. What landmark did you investigate? Or do you have a question, Felix? No comments. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Yes, I have a question. Uh, this is this is my first class. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can uh, explain me um, how, um, when we use passive voice or what is passive voice because I I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, because you were not here uh, yesterday, right? Yes, sir. No, no. This is my first class. I understand. Yes. Well, we are studying yes. passive voice also um, mixed with landmarks, right? Because the passive voice is used to describe different things and we can find it in text to explain history or explain like scientific tests. And yesterday we were, we were studying this, right? We had different examples. And for example, a just very, really fast, right? The passive voice, it says here that it's used to show interest 
in the person of uh, the object that experiences the action rather than the, than the doer. So the, per, the, the person or the thing that receives the action is the important thing here, not the doer. El que importa es quien recibe la acción, no quien la hace, ¿verdad? That is the passive voice. And why do we use it? We use it just like to, for example, if we don't know who did an action, we don't know the doer of an action. And also we use it for um, text like, like very formal text, right? For example, this is an example that was passiva cambia el enfoque de la oración. Uh, in this case, we the platform is just showing the, the passive voice only in past, but we were explaining that we can use it in different tenses, present, past, past participle, and we were studying like a formula because with formulas, it's easier to write sentences. We just need to follow the formula. For example, in active voice, my sister wrote the book or wrote this book. My sister is the important part here in the sentence because uh, we are talking about my sister. We are focusing um, my attention in my sister, right? Estamos enfocándonos en my sister and mi hermana porque es la parte importante de la oración. Ese es el sujeto. Pero en la voz pasiva, in the passive voice, it's not important who does it, who wrote the book, who does the action. The important thing is who receives the action. In this case, the book receives the action. ¿Cuál es la acción? Escribir, va que ha sido escrito. ¿Quién ha sido escrito? El libro. So, uh, we change it. The object is now the subject of the sentence. And now we follow the, the other uh, formula. Object plus was, where, if it is in past, si está en pasado, plus past participle, plus by, and the subject is an op is optional, right? We can add it to the sentence or we cannot add it, we can disappear it, right? So if we can add it, we can use it by and the subject. The book was written by my sister. So esta oración está en pasado. Uh, what, would, what do we have to do? We have to practice. Por eso uh, les dejé esta tarea de investigar una landmark. ¿Qué es, what is a landmark? ¿Quién me puede decir qué es una landmark? Ayer investigamos eso. Ayer dijimos que era una es, landmark. Es un sitio uh, significativo de un lugar que nos puede dar como una referencia. Exactly. Es el famous place right it can be a building it can be a mountain it can be a lake todas esas son landmarks pero estas es las son las las estructuras que vamos a utilizar también aquí tenemos más ejemplos y aquí tenemos otro ejemplo más claro en el cual aquí se ve cómo cambia el quien hace la acción y quien recibe la acción por ejemplo president herbert hoover Opened the building in 1931. In the passive voices, the building was opened by the president in 1931. So we have to practice. We have to change um, the the object of the sentence, and uh, it, it will be the the subject, right? In passive voice. So we just have to practice, right? Aquí hay más ejemplos. Mr. Johnson prepared the food. The food was prepared by Mr. Johnson. Santiago wrote a book. The book was written by Santiago. So that is in a very fast way, uh, the passive way, what we have studied. Eso es lo que hemos estudiado hasta ahorita, ¿verdad? Y aquí está la, la misma estructura que hemos estado practicando. Now, uh, do we have another person with another landmark? Uh, another volunteer, otro voluntario? O eso sería todo. Olga? You said that you investigated about the Sydney Park, right? Yes, it's, it's, a, uh, it's the, the first uh, destination, tourist destination of the city. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, El Recibe uh, is uh, visiting for a uh, um, eight, Point two million tourists per year, mm -hmm. and uh, have a uh, those. <laughs> seria 
2,000 uh, company to mm -hmm. to uh, um, artists and uh, uh, three three thousand no three three no trescientos <laughs> se me olvidó trescientos <laughs> Eh, 62, <laughs> me olvidó 300, 62 uh, eh, de, eh, eh, time eh, of the years, and all the years eh, have a uh, activity uh, to da dance, uh, uh, eh, poemas no sé, o poetas, no sé cómo se dice. Poeta, poet. Oh, poet uh -huh. and uh, dancing and superstars uh, sing, uh, singing and it's a, a great place. Okay, I, very good. I would like to visit. <laughs> you would like to visit it? Yes. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. And is that the Sydney Stadium, right? Uh, no, it's a uh, house of house opera. House opera. Uh huh. Opera. House opera in Sydney. Let's see. Uh huh. The place. Ah, yes, when the house yes. opera. Yes, it's, it's very beautiful. emblematic. It's a beautiful. Yes. You have never visited yes. before. Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Very good. Now no. uh, let's see here. Because we had like an example here. Sorry. Vamos a, a ver eh, las oraciones que usted me dijo. Vamos a ver qué le falta a esta oración. Yo creo que sí la escribió, pero. Is visited by two million tourists per year. It is missing here the subject, right? So this is passive voice also. It is visited by two, 8.2 million tourists per year. And you said 2,000 companies of artists, right? Okay. And you said that it's visited by poets, dancers, starts, and it's a great place. So we can write another passive uh, sentence here, right? It is visited by poets, dancers, and stars, right? It's a great place. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Olga. Do we have another volunteer? Algún otro voluntario? Or that's it? That's it? Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay, if you have any question, mientras hacemos la clase, alguna pregunta, me la pueden decir, ¿verdad? Una pregunta. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Eh, en, la, en la primera oración dice, is visited by by 8.2 million tourists per per year right? yes per year right? por año yes okay yes it's not for year because probably olga uh, for it is in spanish por verdad for pero uh, si decimos por año is per year per year but it was really good es la primera vez que oigo esa palabra y no sabía que era correcto pero yes. bueno gracias Yes, okay, very good. No problem. Now we are going to practice more the passive voice. Sí, para... yo, yes? Solo una cuestión. Yo hice este, dos oraciones, pero quiero mejor decírselas para ver si están bien. Ajá. Okay. Uh, many people visited to New York in 2000. Mm -hmm. Y la otra sería New York was by visited many people in 2000. En pasiva y activa. Están bien. Yes. The arcade. Okay. New York was visited by many people, by, right? By many people. Many people. Mm -hmm. no. In 2000. Okay. Yes, they are good. They are correct. Many people visited New York in the year 2000, right? That's okay. That is active. Uh -huh. And New York was visited uh, by many people in 2000. As you can see, this is in past visited is in past and yes. this one is past right was visited was very good okay. 
Thank you. Very good. Okay, now we're going to continue practicing. This is what we are going to do. It says change these sentences into passive sentences with by. Then take turns reading them aloud. Cambia las oraciones a forma pasiva con by. Luego lee las oraciones para todos en clase. Vamos a cambiarlas así nomás. Si quieren, pueden escribirlas. If you want to, you can write it. Or uh, just like that, right? Because it's really easy if we pay attention to the words. Number one. Frederick Bartholdi designed the Statue of Liberty in 1984. Change it to passive. ¿Cómo sería en pasivo? Frederick Bartholdi designed the Statue of Liberty in 1884. The Statue of Liberty mm -hmm. was What? designed, mm -hmm. designed by, by Frederick Bart Bartholdi in 1884. Very good, very good. The Statue of Liberty was designed by Freddy Bartoldi in 1984. Now, next one. Marie Curie discovered radium in 1898. En pasivo, ¿cómo sería? How would be the passive voice of that sentence? The radium... Mm -hmm. was discovered by Mary Curie in 1898. Very good. Mary, uh, radium was discovered by Mary Curie in 1998. Si se fijan, después del verbo está lo que sería el objeto, ¿verdad? The Statue of Liberty discovered radium, right? It's next to it. It's next to it. So this one that is next to it, is the subject for the passive voice, right? Very good. Let's see the next one. Gabriel Garcia Marquez wrote 100 Years of Solitude in 1971. Now in passive voice, change it. Yeah. 100 Years of uh, uh... Solitude mm -hmm. was writing by Gabriel Garcia Marquez in 1971. Exactly, very good. 100 Years of Solitude was written by written. Gabriel Garcia Marquez in 1971. Very good. Next one. Wu Pike produced the first digital HD TV or high definition television in 1991. Now change it into passive. Was was Produce, produce, was produced by by who paint who pike who pike in um, 100 in 1991 uh, right 1991 very good very good very good Jacqueline the you see produce is the verb and then we, this is the subject now that we change it into passive right the first digital hdtv uh, was produced by wu mm -hmm. pike in 1991 now the last one salma hayek played frida kahlo in the movie frida in 2002 yeah what is next to uh, the verb. What is the verb? Play, right? Play. Played. And mm -hmm. now, what would be the subject? Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo, mm -hmm. no. Frida Kahlo was, was played, played. Was played mm -hmm. by Salma Hayek by Salma in the movie Hayek. Frida. 
Friday. In 2002. 2002 or 2002. Very good, very good. You see, it's easy, right? Frida Kahlo was played by Saima Hayek in the movie Frida in 2002. Now we are going to check the sentences. You see, these are the, um, the, the answers. No. The Statue of Liberty was designed by Frederick Bartoli in 1984. Mm -hmm. Radium was discovered by Marie Curie in 1898. Uh, DH, uh, uh, this is one, 100 Years of Solitude was written by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. The first digital HDTV was produced by Wu Pike and Frida Kahlo was played by Salma Hayek in the movie Frida. You see, very good, perfect, perfect. Now we still have like 15 minutes. We are going to do the same, right? In this one, we just need to choose the, the, the verbs to complete these sentences. It says, Romeo and Juliet. ¿Cuál sería el verbo que escogerían para esta oración? Romeo and Juliet by right. Shakespeare. Right. 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 And passive voice? Right. No. And, and passive voice. Right. Was written. Written, exactly. Oh, okay. Was written. Romeo and Juliet was written by Shakespeare, right? San Francisco. It's a San Francisco by an earthquake. What is an earthquake? ¿Qué es an earthquake? Terremoto. 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 No. Temblor, exactly, by an earthquake in yeah. 1906. So San Francisco was, was destroyed. Destroyed. Was destroyed. 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 Destroyed by an earthquake by an, uh, in 1906. 1906. Very good. The Sistine Chapel. The Sistine Chapel by Michelangelo. Which one is the verb? Mm. Paint, 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 paint. Was, was painted, painted. right? Why? The Sistine painted. Chapel uh -huh. was painted by Michelangelo. Uh -huh. The Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. The same, was painted. Painted. The same right? The same. Was, painted. Was, painted was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. Very good. Next one, the light bulb was invented. Covered it. Was this inventive? Invented. Invented by Edison. And the last one, the law of gravity was discovered. Was discovered. Exactly. Was discovered by Newton. Let's see. And now we have the 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 answers. You see, Romeo and Juliet was written by Shakespeare. San Francisco was destroyed by an earthquake in 1906. The Sistine Chapel was painted by Michelangelo. The Mona Lisa was painted by Leonardo da Vinci. The libel was invented by Edison. And the law of gravity was discovered by Newton. You see, it's really easy, right? Or is it difficult? Easy or difficult? <laughs> it's easy. It's so, easy. So, easy, right? It's easy. easy. It's easy. It's easy. It's a piece of cake. Yes, exactly. This is the same. <laughs> it's a piece of, exactly, it's a piece of cake. It's the same. Uh, the same exercise. I don't know if you want to do it. Yes or no? Do you want to do it? It is up to you. Because mm -hmm. we just have five, ten minutes. It's the same, right? If we, if you want to, we can do it really fast. For example, the moons of Jupiter. Jupiter. This is mm -hmm. like two two uh, sentences or two verbs, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, this one is the verb to be where? The moms, the, the moms of, of Jupiter, Jupiter were first. Were first uh, saw by... Exactly, but Oliver. remember that is the past participle. What is the past participle of C? So. so. That is the past. The past participle of C... How? Seen. See, so seen. exactly seen, S E N, seen. right? Seen. The moons of Jupiter were first seen by Galileo. Eight, Everest. Climb, base. Climb, exactly. Climb. Uh -huh. Everest was, was climbed, climbed by Sir Edmund by Hillary. Sir Edmund Hillary. Exactly. Next yeah. one, J F K. That is John F Kennedy, right? Yeah, okay. Was assassinated. 
exactly assassinated. was assassinated assassinated yes. very good by yes. lee harvey oswald number 10 the pyramids the pyramids yes. were were shut shut were shut no is is by were built. 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 built exactly built. were built fueron construidas verdad mm -hmm. and the eiffel tower was built 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 built, built. built. in built. the 19th century built. Uh -huh. and we have another one the sphinx nose was what is the meaning the is sphinx, sphinx Sphinx, la nariz mm -hmm. de la esfinge. Ah, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Was built. Was built no. or no. was was shot? Shot. Was shot, shot right? Was yeah. shot by shot. Napoleon. Let's see what the shot. Que es shot. Que es shoot. Is... Shoot can have two meanings, right? Shoot can be Disparar, disparar or disparar mm -hmm. con la cámara, verdad? Tomar mm -hmm. una fotografía. Shot can have two meanings. Now we have here the mm -hmm. the answers. The moons of Jupiter were first seen by Galileo. Everest was climbed by Sir Edmund Hillary. JFK was assassinated by Lee Harvey Oswald, and the pyramids were built by the pharaohs. The Eiffel Tower was built in the 19th century and the Sphinx's nose was shot by Napoleon. So very good, you did very well. I am very happy because you did very well. Now this is like um, a listening practice because some of you said that you had problems with a listening. Um, do you want to listen to it or? Or we can skip it if you want to. ¿La quieren escuchar? O si seguimos, podemos seguir con esta conversación. Aunque podemos dejar la conversación para mañana para que ustedes la practiquen. Ok. Entonces, ¿está bien así? Sí. 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 para mañana. Sí. 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 Entonces, wow, ese es el homework que vamos a dejar, ¿verdad? El homework es que mañana vamos a practicar esta, esta um, conversación y voy a tratar de mandárselas al grupo para que ustedes la tengan. I will try to send it to the group so you will have it, okay? Okay, okay. okay now we're, we will try to check this one. This is really worth seeing. I guess I already have it here. Este es un listening. Y como pueden ver aquí, hay, ora, hay preguntas. Por ejemplo, mm -hmm. why was it built? Why do we uh, do the changing colors of the building represent? What did the King Louis, et cetera, right? right? This is the mm -hmm. Taj Mahal. This is the Palace of Versailles and La Sagrada Familia. Oh, so okay. these are landmarks, right? Landmarks also. Mm -hmm. And we have here... I don't know if you are able to listen to it. Can you, lo pueden escuchar o no? Escuchan o no? A little bit. A little bit. No. No teacher. No. Okay, let me check here. Voy a dejar de compartir y voy a volverla a compartir para ver si si lo pueden escuchar. Sería esta. Page 74. ¿Pueden escucharlo ahora sí? Yes. yes. Ok, vaya, vamos a oír este listening para ver si lo pueden eh, captar la idea, ok. Made Wonders of the World, Part A. Listen to three tour guides describe some famous monuments. Take notes to answer the questions below. Then compare with a partner. 1. Taj Mahal. Why was it built? What do the changing colors of the building represent? What would you do for love? 
Would you take 17 years to build a place to remember someone? That's what Emperor Shah Jahan did when he built the Taj Mahal. This incredible building was designed for his wife when she died. She was his third wife, but also his favorite. The colors of the building change with the time of day, and they say that the different colors represent the different moods of women. So, ladies, you can change your mood three times a day, and it's accepted. <laughs> now, this was built almost 400 years ago, before modern construction equipment. So think about all the work that went into building this. More than 1,000 elephants were used to transport materials, and around 20,000 people were hired to build the Taj Mahal. Now, if we walk closer, you'll see... Okay, very good. Did you listen to the Taj Mahal information? Yes? More or, more or yes. less. Repeat, yes. please. More or less. Okay. It says, why was it built? ¿Por qué fue construido? Why? En honor a la esposa del, del, del Taj Mahal. Del Taj Mahal. Del Taj Mahal. Because uh, the wife of the king uh, was, was dying. Was dying. Yeah, she she passed, right? She passed away and he built the building, right? For it was his third wife, right? From Sash Ahan, right? And what does it represent the colors of the building? What do they represent? Um and the narrator say that the colors um change the color and like uh depends the mood the mood of women's emotion exactly it's like emotion, emotion of the women right that they the changes through the day right like yes yeah, yeah mm -hmm. it, it that's that's the meaning right but very good very good now the number two right palace of versailles let's see two palace of versailles what did king louis the 14th want the hall of mirrors to show what problem did the candles cause? How did the mirrors help? Now we come to the Hall of Mirrors, one of the most famous rooms in the Palace of Versailles. King Louis XIV wanted this room to show all the riches and power of France. The paintings on the wall, the beautiful detail of the room, the gardens outside. They were all made more visible with the mirrors. But electricity didn't exist in those days, so candles were used. Any idea what problems the candles caused? Anyone? Candles make smoke? That's right. Candles make smoke, and smoke can damage paintings. The mirrors reflected the light of the candles, so they didn't have to use as many. Fewer candles meant less smoke, and less smoke damage to the room. Pretty smart, right? Now let's go see some of the 350 rooms and apartments for visitors. Very good. Now we uh, listen to the Palace of Versailles. It says, what did King Louis XIV want the Half of Mirrors to show? ¿Para qué usaba los espejos, el Salón de los Espejos? ¿Para qué? Uh, like a light, uh, illuminate the place. Very good, because it was more illumination, right? Because of the candles. And what was the problem with the candles? Uh, the candle. Oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the candle uh, was uh, very smoke. They make smoke, right? Make and they smoke. damage uh -huh. the painting. Very yeah. good, very good. Now, the last one, La Sagrada Familia, just to finish, okay? Three, La Sagrada Familia. What did the architect think about man-made structures versus nature? Why are no straight lines used? Folks, I am so excited today to show you La Sagrada Familia. Construction on this church started in 1882, and over 130 years later, it's still not finished. The architect, Antony Gaudí, felt very strongly that architecture should reflect nature, and you can see this in his buildings. For example, 
You may notice that hill over there. La Sagrada Familia is exactly one meter shorter because Gaudí believed that no man-made structure should be taller than its natural surroundings. And notice the curves of the church. This is another example of how Gaudí copied nature. He said, if straight lines don't exist in nature, they shouldn't exist in architecture either. Okay, very good. Now, um, what were the questions about the La Sagrada Familia? Like what uh, did the architect think about my main structures versus nature? ¿Qué pensaba él de la naturaleza y de la, la arquitectura? About the straight lines that he used. And the naturalists uh, uh, don't have a, a line, a right line. Mm -hmm. Only uh, linear curvas. Just curves, right? Just curves. Okay. Like there is no mm -hmm. straight lines, right? Very good. Yes. So that's why he designed the, the church, La Sagrada Familia, in that way, right? Because it has to be similar to lines in nature, right? The structures in nature. Very good. Very good. Now, uh, as I mentioned before, right, tomorrow we are going to have uh, this conversation, okay? So I will send it to you to the group, practice it, and tomorrow we are going to practice in couples, right? Okay? Okay, very good. Okay. Uh, what is, uh, ¿qué vamos a hacer, Ana? Mañana con uh... la conversación. Lo vamos a practicar en parejas. Exactly, exactly. Se lo voy a mandar al grupo y la van a practicar en parejas, ¿ok? So, I will see you tomorrow. Gracias por venir, gracias por el esfuerzo. Y descansen, que pasen muy feliz noche, ¿ok? Good evening. Thank, Thank you, teacher. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye. Bye.